Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Now, in this video, I'm going to do something I've never done before. And then I'm going to do something else I've never done before. And then I'm going to do something else I've ne never done before. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to give you the model that I use, the specific step-by-step -step system of how to track and master and increase your net worth. So you cannot master what you don't measure. And most people on the planet do not measure their net worth. They have no idea what they're worth. They have no idea how to measure and track what they're worth. And as such, their net worth doesn't go up. So I've listed everything that I have in a private folder with about 58 million encryptions um, that I do to track my net worth to make it easy for you to track your net worth. When you track your net worth, your net worth will increase. When you don't track it, it will likely decrease. So that's the first thing I'm going to do in this video step by step. The second thing I'm going to do is once I've done that, I'm actually going to create it into a usable format, whether that's some kind of online uh, piece of software or a spreadsheet or something. And then I'm going to gift it to you. Uh, and so you need to stay to the end of this video to get the link. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to give you the link where you go and register and then this month, I'll get it done. I might have to give it to a coder, you know, or a software developer or just someone who can make a really good spreadsheet out of it. So you've got a formula, a formulaic process of tracking your net worth, the same uh, process that I use. And, and I started doing this when I was in debt and it's made me tens of millions of pounds and you can follow it. Then the third thing I'm going to do, and I thought this would be cool. I've never done this before. I don't know if anyone has done this before, but I've got this gift here. So you can see this is quite big, as you can see. So this here is a gift from um, the artist Pure Evil. I buy a lot of his art and it's gone up significantly over the last, what, four or five years. And um, I, I bought a big batch of it because I love his art and I want to support great artists. And also I'm hoping that it goes up in value. And he's given me this piece, which is really kind of him. It's a one out of one edition and I'm going to give it away. And that's not because I don't love his art. I love his art. I've got loads of his art, but I'm just feeling generous. So. Uh, to anybody who gets my net worth formula model that you can use, I'm going to pick one of you at random and I'm going to give away this one of one piece of art. In fact, I'll get it framed for you, which will cost me about 200 quid. I'll get that done for you as well. So that's all going to be revealed at the end. So let me just go through then. I'm going to give you exactly how to track your net worth, exactly how I, as I do it. Then at the end, I'm going to give you a link where you can subscribe. It's just, you know, to share your email with me. I won't spam you. I won't email you anything other than good value in the future. And I'll give you the model. And so one person, one lucky person is going to get this one out of one. Can you see at the bottom there? One out of one unique piece of art that Charlie did for me. Um, pure evil, the artist. All right. So let's get into it then. So. Um, most people aren't growing their net worth because they're not measuring it. They don't even have an idea what it is. In fact, someone emailed me this morning and said, um, I don't even know what I spend uh, and what I earn in my bank accounts each month. And I was like, whoa, that's dangerous. It's like, you know, not knowing what you're putting in your body. So um, you absolutely must track your net worth fast. It's like keeping a score. It's like setting targets. It's not because you want to be a greedy um, billionaire who screws people over this. And this is not what it's about. What it's about is mastering by measuring, tracking, like key performance indicators in a business. So this is what you do in this order. So the first thing you do is you would put your total cash in bank at the top. So I don't know, you know, you, you probably got four or five bank accounts. You might have a property bank account. You might have a savings account, a couple of current accounts, etc. And you just put your cash in bank figure in there. And I don't like keeping any more than 70 grand in any one bank account because, you know, they don't normally guarantee above that. So in my current account, I never have more than 50,000 pounds in it. In my one or two or three savings account, I never have more than 70,000 pounds in it. One, because that's what they guarantee um, or insure. Uh, but two, because it's not a good use of money anyway. So you put your bank accounts at the top. If you do have cash and hold cash, some do, some don't, then the next cell or list is cash. You know what you have in cash. And you know, I don't hold a lot of cash um, because we don't really take cash in our business. So it's just sort of, you know, pounds and pence there. OK, and then under your cash in bank, you want to put each asset that you own and list it out, subdivided into each asset class. So I'm going to list you the assets that um, I have that you could have. Now, you should list these assets out, even if you don't have anything in them at the moment, even if you're at zero, because it's good to target building these assets, because as you earn more money, it is wise to diversify into different asset classes. 
So in no particular order, you'll have your home that you live in. Now, some see this as an asset, some see this as a liability, but most of you have your own home. Uh, and so you put the total value of your home. Now, when you put the total value of your assets in your um, asset column, I think it's really important to put fire sale values. I.e., Some people put an, uh, unrealistic fantasies of what their assets are worth, best case scenario. You should put, if you had a week or a month to sell this and liquidate it very quickly, what would you likely get? So I think, what do I think it's worth minus, say, 10 or 15 percent? So you'll put your home in. Now, under each asset, you want the net equity. So you've got total asset value and the net equity of assets. So, for example, if you've got a house worth a million pounds and you've got a mortgage of 500,000 pounds on it, then you've got a million pounds for the asset value. And then underneath it, you've got 500,000 net equity, i.e. your net worth is your total assets minus all the associated debt and overhead associated to that asset. So you list a home value, fire sale, and, and then underneath it, you take off what the loan is on it, and then you're left with the net asset value. Now, if you've got no mortgage, it's a million pound value and a million pound um, net equity. Uh, and like I said, if you've got half a million pounds with a mortgage, it's half a million pound net equity. So you've got your home. Then next, you've got your property investments. You have might have buy to lets, rent to rents, commercial properties, etc. And the same thing, you put the total asset value and then you take off all the associated debt to have your net equity. Now, I like to break it into my various portfolios. So I've got my buy-to-let portfolio. I've got my commercial conversion portfolio. I've got my um, properties that I own in, in my company. Um, you know, I've got my company properties, you know, my training suite and, and the company. So I've got about five different portfolios and I like to break it down into each one because each one has a different performance or a different purpose. And again, for each asset, you're having total value, fire sale, and then net equity after all debt. And sometimes you've got a lot of debt and sometimes you've got no debt. If you've got a million pound value and a million pound debt, you put that in and you've got net asset value of zero. OK, then your stocks and shares portfolio. Um, so I use Hargreaves Lansdowne and I self invest because I think the one thing you shouldn't outsource is your knowledge of money and the way you manage your own money. You should manage your own money. I'm not saying you shouldn't lend it out. I'm not saying you shouldn't do JVs, but you should manage your own money. Nothing against I IFAs, but, you know, I think you should become your own IFA, just like you should know what food you're putting into your body. So you'll put your stocks and shares in. Uh, and then next is ISAs. So, you know, you should target investing your £20,000 a year into your own ISAs. Now, that will go up each year. So if you put ISA in your um, net worth statement, even if you're not investing it, it will encourage you and focus your mind to think, oh, I've got to put some money into my ISAs. Um, and remember, I said I'm going to give you a version of this document. I'm going to create it because I've never shared it before ever. I've never told anyone anything about this, um, but I think it's really useful to you. So I'm going to give you a link at the end where you'll be able to get your hands on my copy. All right. Now, in, in, in a recent addition to me in the last six years in ISAs is my children's ISAs. So I've got an ISA for me, an ISA for my wife, an ISA for my son, a junior ISA, and an ISA for my daughter, a junior ISA. So I've added those in in the last six years, uh, and I target now um, investing into those. Now, the, the value you can put in a junior ISA is a bit less than, you know, a, a, a full ISA like you, but you should target that every year. Underneath that, I have watches. You know, I have a decent amount of money, um, more than 500,000, less than 5 million in watches. But, you know, like, you shouldn't just go and put that money in. You might not have that money, but watches is something that I've got a passion in. It's, you know, I've got a small amount of my net worth, but still a significant amount in watches. Um, you may target your first watch to buy as an investment as well, like a Rolex Daytona or a Rolex Explorer or something like that. Uh, underneath that, this is in no particular order, like I said, I then have pension. So your SIP, your self-invested pension. I don't have a company pension, but you might have a company pension that you pay into. So you'd put that in and you'd roughly work out the value. Or you might have a self-invested pension and again, have one through Hargreaves Lansdowne. So I put that in, you know, its current value. Um, then underneath that, I have art. So remember, I'm giving away this unique one out of one original of the artist Pure Evil um, at the end of this video. Uh, and um, I've been investing in art for probably six or seven years. Most of my art is through, I invest in Pure Evil art, um, but there are other pieces of art too. Um, so again, you put in the value, i.e. fire sale value. So if I pay, say, three grand for a piece of art, I'll probably put in that it's worth um, fire sale value two and a half grand. Um, and of course, I pay cash for that, or not necessarily physical cash, but I don't get the lending on it. So then the net asset value of that is two and a half thousand. Now, what I do each year 
is I track how the prices have gone up or down. I'll come to that in a moment so that you can see if it's going up or down in value. And then I just sort of duplicate my sheet and put a copy of it underneath so I can see where it's moved year on year on year. So if I've got 2018 here, I've copy and pasted 2017 with its values, 2016, 2015, 2014, 2013. So I can go all the way back and see how the net worth has grown over the years. All right, then underneath R, I have Lego and wine. Um, so I have some money in Lego, um, in retired pieces. I've got a business partner who uh, invests with me. I put the money in and he finds the pieces. Wine, I don't have a lot of wine investments, to be honest. It's not an area I know, but I would like to have a bit more wine. I've got a basement that I can store wine in, so I should probably utilize that space a little bit more. Then underneath that, there's cryptos. As you know, I've been in cryptos and gone in um, a little bit, more than 10,000, less than 100,000. So it's just speculative investments on money I can afford to lose at the moment. So you put cryptos underneath that. I have cars um, because, you know, your depreciating liabilities are also part, part of your net worth statement as much as your appreciating assets. So Mark and I have cars that we jointly own, that we separately own. Um, some of them have gone up, some of them go down. But it's important to put them on your net worth statement as well, because if you've got cars that are big liabilities are going down, that will reduce your net worth statement. So I'll put my cars on. Then number plates. I've bought a few cherished plates in the hope that they'll go up. Um, so I've put them in and what I've paid and what I think they're worth. And then also, I think it's important to put major possessions in. So I've got a, a high fi uh, some hi-fi equipment and various things I've bought for the house. I put the purchases of them in uh, and then, um, you know, what I think they would sell for. Now, I like to buy items like that uh, secondhand on hi-fi dealers so that hopefully when I buy it, it's, its value is what it is or maybe just a tiny bit less, but not too much. Now, put your major items in, but everything else, just estimate a value. Uh, and then that is all of your assets and liabilities in a list with the total and then the net equity. And so underneath, what, so what you do is you add all of the total asset value and you put a figure on that underneath. So that, let's say that's six million, 100,000, doesn't really matter what it is. And then underneath that, you put the total debt. And if we're using six million as an example, let's say you've got three million of debt and then you take off the three million from the six million and then you have your total net worth. And that is the figure. It's the total asset and liabilities minus the total debt equals your net worth. And that's the figure that you should be targeting that goes up and up and up and up and up. And that will go, go up either by you investing in more assets or assets going up or your debt going down because you're paying it off. Um, and so, you know, if you're if debt is going down and asset values are going up, then obviously you're going to get a faster increase in your net worth. Now, underneath that, I put my gross monthly income because in addition to my net worth, I want to know my income gross and net per month. And then I want to know my net passive income. And then I want to know a couple of other metrics, which I'll share with you. Before I do share those um, metrics with you, and by the way, when I said six million and three million, that wasn't my net worth. I'm not going to share with you what, what my net worth is. That would be stupid to do. But remember, I'm going to share with you this document so you can track your own. And I'm going to give away this one out of one from the gift to me. Look, he's even signed it there. This was a gift from Charlie, the artist, Pure Evil, um, because I bought a lot of his work and I thought it was a really generous gift and I wanted to extend that gift on. All right. Um, so we've done total net worth and now we're on to gross monthly income. So you want to work out what your gross monthly income is, maybe from your job, maybe from income from assets, from your company, etc. And what you want to do is just put the figure that you get per month at the moment. Then under that, you want to put all your total expenses per month. So maybe you've got 30 grand gross monthly income. You've got 20 grand gross monthly expenditure. So then underneath that, you've got your net monthly income. And then your net monthly income will be £10,000. So again, you're targeting getting your gross income up, getting your gross expenses down to improve and increase your net monthly income. Then underneath that, I like to have the passive figure. So I've got gross monthly income from all sources, active and passive, but I like to have a passive income figure as well. So assets like all my books that create income or my training businesses where I'm not actively involved that create income or any ad revenue if I'm selling ad space or revenue from uh, my property portfolio, etc. I put it all in. I, I have a one third share in a, a letting agency that has about 720 properties, but I'm not actively involved in that. So the income I get per month, I put into that. Because you're also looking to increase your passive income as well as your active income. So you put your net passive income figure there as well. 
Then the next metric, we've got about two more and then I'm going to give those gifts. This is an important one, which I don't know uh, anyone who's been tracking this and you should. And I like to track my monthly living figure in months, i.e. the amount of months I could live without work. And what that is, is your total net worth divided by your monthly expenses. So let's try and work out a figure. If your net, uh, if your net worth is 300,000 and your monthly expenses are 10,000, then you've got 30 months that you can live without work. So this monthly living figure is the number of months you could live from today without having to work again if things went wrong, i.e. selling all your assets, living off your monthly income, etc., etc., etc. And then what you're doing is you're targeting the number of months going up. You could take it from one month to three months to 30 months to 300 months to 3,000 months. And of course, the, the more months that there are, the more that you can live through disruptions, challenges, recessions, etc., so again, let me state that figure. It's an important figure. It is your monthly living figure, um, i.e. without having to work or earn any more money, measured in months, and it's your total net worth divided by your monthly expenses. Then, once, so that's everything. They're all the things I track. The cash in bank, the listing of all of the assets, the total value, fire sale value, and then the taking off the debt to have the net equity. Uh, and then you've got your total net worth, your gross monthly income, your net monthly income, your net passive income, your monthly living figure in number of months. And then what you do, I like to, to uh, adjust this every six months. Um, so I'll go back in six months and I'll look at all of my assets. Are they worth a little bit more? Are they worth a little bit less? Have I earned more passive income? What do I need to update? Hopefully add some assets that I've bought. When I buy an individual asset, like a watch or a property, I'll go and add it in there and then. But you could just note it in another document and add it all in every six months. And then you copy and paste. So you've got your current one. Uh, you copy and paste that to be 2017. And then you just keep your existing one for 2018 so that you can see the change in movements. So if your net worth has gone up £300,000, then you keep your old one up £300,000 is your new one. And then you can see how it, whether it's going up or down. You've also got to do this when it's going down, um, because remember, you can't master what you don't measure. Uh, and so when you've been doing this a few years, you can go back and go, wow, I was worth 13 pence seven years ago and now I'm worth 13 million. Um, and honestly, your net worth will increase when you track this because not only are you tracking on it, you're measuring it, you're focusing on it. It's making you focus on, oh, I've got to get a watch investment this year. Oh, I've got to add to my um, pensions. I've got to get an art investment. I've got to get two buy to let property. So it's a way of like creating goals and targets as well as tracking. Honestly, it's really powerful. Uh, and I'm amazed most people don't do this. OK, so here's what you need to do for a gift for everyone. Um, and then I'm going to pick one person at random who's going to get my one out of one uh, limited edition art piece of art. It's a, it's a print and an original. So it's a print, but then he's overlaid some sign and design on it to make it an original. So, so I, I guess it's like a one out of one print. Um, I don't know what it's worth. It doesn't really matter, it's, you know, but it's probably going to go up in value for you. So I'm giving away assets instead of liabilities. So if you go to robmore.com, that's it, just robmore.com. Under the big banner image, you know, which has got the big images that are scrolling, that sort of looks like a little video, you've got a little bar there where you can put your email address and your name. Now, if you go and do that, and I do not spam people, I will not ever make you any sales offers in this through my site and my videos, I just offer you value. If you go and put your name and email in there, then I'll know that, um, you know, you've contacted me. And this month, I'm going to get my net worth statement, document, spreadsheets, piece of software, whatever, done, and I'm going to gift it to you. So you just go to robmore.com. It's not a landing page. It's actually my website. And you need to find the opt-in box, which is underneath the big scrolling image. Just put your name and email in there. And I promise you this month, it might take me a couple of weeks to get it done. This month, I will get my net worth statement as I've listed out to you in a document so you can track it. Um, I have it on secure software, passworded on my phone, which you can also access on my um, laptop. Uh, and you'll be able to do the same. So for everyone who goes and does that now, go to robmore.com, I'm going to pick at the end of this month at random one of you and one of you. I'm going to frame this as well. So that's going to, you know, just make it nice. You can put it up in your house. Uh, I'm going to give that away. Um, so just pass on the gifts that Charlie gave to me. I mean, he's probably selling these for about five to 700 quid, I guess. I bought a piece like this for Mark's house, which was 700 quid um, for his housewarming and wedding gift. So, yeah, I guess it's probably worth about 500 quid and I'm going to give that away as well. So go to robmore.com. Just put your name and email in under the banner uh, image that scrolls. 
I will send you my net worth statement calculator in whatever format I can get it done in. And one of you I'll announce at the end of the month is going to win this unique piece of art. And then you can go and put it on your net worth statement. You can go and put 500 quid on it. Uh, all right. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. Uh, it's something I've wanted to do for a while, but not really sort of um, thought of sharing it in this way. I hope the way I presented it was useful to you. I know I sort of listed it out. You're probably going to want to save this video and listen, save this podcast and watch it again and again. Um, you know, because there's quite a lot of information in there. Thanks for tuning in. If you think there's anyone that could benefit from this because they're not tracking their net worth, this could be a great gift to give to them so that they can um, master their life by measuring their worth. Uh, you know, by all means, share away. Some people uh, message me asking for my permission to share stuff. Hey, look, you don't need my permission. I'm very grateful to you for sharing my work. Thanks for following me. Thanks for everything you do. I think you're awesome. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.